because really <laughs> chunks come flying out. Going off here o'clock again, right? Yep, it's six fifty-nine. Has anybody called in that they weren't going to be here? Uh, I did not receive a call saying that they were. I, I also I I completely forgot last week. Oh. Somehow between the time I got the email and seven o'clock on Monday night, about nine o'clock on Monday night, I'm like. Yeah. 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 Well, everybody's schedule is going on. Yeah, it is. So we got a quorum. All right. I'm calling uh, the planning commission meeting for June oh. 1st to order. Uh, let's do roll call. Uh, here. Commissioner DeQuet. Here. Commissioner Case. Here. Commissioner Pedra. Here. And Trustee Cruz. Here. All right, we have a quorum. This is, uh, we'll go to public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone to address the plan commission on any issue either on or not on the current agenda. Please observe the time limit of three minutes. While the village board encourages input from residents that may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noticed on the agenda. Do we have anybody registered? Uh, we do, we did receive an, an email from uh, Kim Moner, uh, along Feidel, uh, requesting to be added to the public comment. And Kim is here. All right, feel free to step up please for you. I'm just gonna read this because it's a little easier. Um, I would like to speak to the staff recommendations in the agenda packet for tonight. It's my understanding that it's being proposed that the volleyball courts stay where they currently are. The volleyball courts aren't in the positions shown in the drawings on pages 15, 16, and 22 of the original proposal, particularly the second volleyball court closest to the road. According to the drawings, neither one of the volleyball courts or the netting and poles are anywhere near my home, much less my deck. Yet currently, in real life, the second volleyball court winds up with the middle of my deck. If the volleyball court is left where it currently resides, there are no safety nets and or poles protecting my deck and property, nor should there be, as that would obstruct my view from my deck. I am concerned that Tom is planning on putting up additional poles and netting, further impeding my enjoyment of my property, not to mention the overall effect of all these new developments next door that will have on the value of my property by narrowing the pool of potential buyers should I ever choose to sell. Another concern being the sand from the volleyball courts, unlike what is shown on the drawings in the agenda packet, pages 15 through 22. The courts are not defined nor is the sand contained in them. Therefore, when the storms or rains for long periods of time, the sand runs underneath my fence and into my flower beds when it rains. I'm concerned about exactly what type of storm water retention system will be put into place and who will be doing it. Tom and I discussed this last year and he suggested mailing something to the bottom of my fence. That is something I will not agree to. Thirdly, I'm concerned about the patrons out on the patio after 10 o'clock as I experienced this past weekend. While letting my dogs out one more time at 11.30 Saturday night, there was a group out on the patio talking loud enough that I could hear their entire conversation with it without any trouble while standing on my deck. As I waited for my dogs to come back upstairs, a gentleman walked out from the patio around the back of a bush that faces my property and proceeded to urinate. It is these types of patrons that I find troubling, especially if I am to rely on them respecting the rules and having common courtesy for the neighbors. They're going to be redirected onto the patio to smoke and or drink after hours. Noise will definitely become a factor because the patio faces my building on the side where my bedroom resides. I would ask that there be some way to remind the patrons of foodies that they are also in a residential area and to be respectful of that. My last concern is about other permissions that may be granted in the future, such as outdoor music. I don't believe I should have to be involuntarily subjected to other people's music and musical taste while at my own home. I would ask that you take such things as residential harmony into consideration when granting any new zoning conditions. I would expect that no one business or community member's right to reasonable, peaceful living conditions be put above another's. What I would hope is that you as the people with the power to grant these permissions would stop for one moment and think about, about what you would do if all this was going on and was going to be next year going to act accordingly. Thank you. Anybody on the computer or the phone? We had a couple of joining join us uh, during um, the opening of the meeting, uh, and, but however did not 
register. Uh, did you want me to go through them? Yeah, why don't we ask them? All right, first of all, I have uh, someone that had joined us. Their phone number is 798-3251 at Village Hall. Did you have any comment? Uh, no, no comment. And then next we have a Cameron Bren that joined us. Cameron, do you have any comments? More than once? Twice? Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll close public comment. Go to regular um, business or general business. Approval of the minutes from the Plant Commission meeting held on May 4th. Do I have a motion? I'll move yeah. to approve. All right, do I have a second? Second. All right, I'm, I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the May 4th Plant Commission. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. So moved. All right, discussion and possible action regarding the site plan and Pacific implementation plan for 1821 Main Street, Hootie's Bar and Grill. You want a presentation on this first? Sure, that would be very helpful. <clears throat> so, um, Hootie's had applied for a, a general development plan and a specific implementation plan. Uh, I believe March of 2019. Um, it was recommended by the Planning Commission at that time and then uh, approved by uh, Village Board at that time. As part of your packet and up on the screen, your general development plan includes outdoor activities, volleyball, uh, volleyball and games, outdoor eating and drinking. The outdoor amplified sound is not approved. Um, the property was to be surveyed prior to any disturbance of land. Paved, set, paved area setback for parking for the parking lot extension um, could be less than five feet from the right of way along Mill Street. Uh, the plan allowed for a zero setback for the fence along the paved area, which is the parking lot. The stormwater management plan was to be put in place and reviewed by staff, I believe, and, and listening to the recording that that applied to the, the new parking lot. And that the, the zoning request uh, at the time were, that we're considering also tonight be approved as listed for the current owner only. The specific implementation plan that was approved. Um, was that a chain link fence along the east side of the volleyball courts was acceptable. And I'll show this on the site plan in a, in a minute here. Uh, that a six inch high, a six foot high fence be allowed along the new parking lot. When listening to the recording, it's my understanding that, it, that the six inch, a six foot high fence be along the parking lot and any new uh, portion of the parking lot. That the sur a survey be required for the property um, that the, the village engineer uh, approve the new and current parking lot um, stormwater management plan. I don't believe we would receive a stormwater management plan. A photometric plan and lighting to be approved by staff and added to the new and current parking lot. And lastly, netting to be completely independent from the fence and all the way to the ground. Um, <clears throat> With that being said, I'll, I'll first jump to the site plan and, and kind of describe these items here, and then I'll, I'll provide an uh, explanation of what's transpired since uh, the approval of, of the general development plan and the specific implementation plan. Uh, so I think this is the best. Uh, site plan that we do currently have. Um, we can get into the specifics here in a minute. Uh, but this was the plan that, that was proposed. The chain link fence that, that, that was discussed is along this section here. 
running north, south and north, and in between the Valley Golf Course and um, the existing parking lot. This area over here was the, the proposed extension of the parking lot. I don't believe that police moved forward with that. And so um, the items that relate to a new parking lot um, have not been completed at this time. That being said, uh, so what's transpired since then, uh, general development plan was approved, uh, specific implementation plan was approved, um, and thereafter there was no follow-up inspection to ensure that, that what was built uh, currently out there is in accordance with the specific implementation plan. Um, Mr. Keister is, is here uh, today uh, to explain the changes and you know, why um, the changes uh, weren't, are not in conformance with the site plan. Of those changes, some of the items here that uh, I've addressed with Mr. Keister and what's led to this meeting uh, include a lamp post or street light that is in this general vicinity here between the two courts that had been there previous. Um, it was proposed to have that removed. Uh, that had not been removed. And Mr. Keyser can explain more about that. Uh, these lights here that face into the volleyball court were never constructed uh, since that lamp post was not removed. Uh, this volleyball court, the southern volleyball court, actually was moved southerly and a light post, an LED light post, was put up in the middle to light the court. So currently the lights um, shine from the, <coughs> the court area out. The section that um, Kim had talked about in her public comments is along this fence line right here, which is the western fence line that runs south to north. There is a property line dispute there. However, the courts are not defined, uh, specifically defined as in the site plan. Um, and there is uh, remnant sand um, in this area here. So, um, can I just go ahead? How far uh, to the south did that one court move for this diagram? Tom, do you know? Yes. I'll be happy to. Do you, do you mind if I just go up? No, go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, basically, what happened here? Okay. Basically, what happened here is when we originally designed this, we designed it with the telephone pole, the the, the light, the security light in there was able to be moved. I couldn't get that rectified with MG. So what I had to do is these courts are going to be about five feet apart, and the light poles are going to be here, going to be here. But because I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the deal swung with MG and E. I, I just had to take and shift this court down about ten feet, which put about fifteen feet in between these courts. So rather than having extra poles in here, I just made the decision honestly to move it set at the center and it shines on this one and shines this one. So rather than have two poles, there's just one pole there, and it just made a little bit more economic sense for us to do it that way since we couldn't. I, I had I couldn't get the other pole moved. And to answer Bill's question, or, or to talk when you talk about the chain link fence here, what we did is we have netting here, and what we did is we just dropped the netting down to the ground versus put up a fence here because with the the dimensions of the volleyball courts, it's a little bit tight. So we just didn't want the kids going into that, you know, banging into that or tearing themselves on that. So with the, with the fence being down here, we just, we just it, when you build things, nothing ever really seems to go according to plan exactly. And so what we did is since we were running late with this plan, I had wanted to have this thing done by May, by May 1st, but I didn't get it done till July 15th because, you know, it rained every day and I, it just, it just was, it just, it just, it, I just couldn't get it done in time. So we were able to actually have leagues last year and it went very, very well. And um, you know, so, so, but that's that was kind of the, 
the reason for the changes was just because the, the light just made more sense to go there. It's one light instead of two, less obstruction in the courts so nobody can hit their heads. And um, we just decided to take the chain link fence out of there and just drop the netting um, down just for another safety feature, really just for the volleyball players, you know. So, did anybody have any questions? I have a picture that can give you perspective of how much those volleyball courts shifted as I'm standing in the middle of my deck. You so see, okay. yeah. that's the Arba Vida and the building. I'm in the middle of my deck, and this is the edge of the court. So that has moved over significantly. Where's the Arba Vida? I'm that. You're talking this one right here, Kim, right? I'm talking that court and this Arba Vida in relationship right. to the patio. Teacher. That that is that close. If I can pass this. So the yeah. court is right up against there. Then the court that is me standing in the middle of my deck, taking the picture, looking down. That is the pole for the second volleyball court. That's the arbor vita in the building. Okay. This so pole, it's right with the patio. That this pole in the netting is flush with the edge of my deck, and that's why I'm saying if you have to put up more poles in netting, that's a whole deck. I there's there's no there's no intention of putting up any more netting. Or poles anywhere. Is the court as far over as that line? Is that what that's on there for? It's nice. a lot closer. It looks closer. Yeah, that's, the that's probably about right about there. So that looks like a lot more than ten feet. Yeah. Well, this this picture might be deceptive a little bit, but what we did is it's just fifteen feet separate from this court to this and court, the edge of the and court. that other court to the north is right up against and the border. The um, no, the there, there's so actually you know the grass burn. Oh, you know, in here a little bit. Not this is my parking lot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's nothing there. But here, there's like there's starting to grow grass burn along this. You know that we we just keep Thank trimmed. You. But yeah, this so this one is down because that existing telephone pole was like right here. So I had to move this cord down because I couldn't get the telephone pole moved. So that's that's basic. So what I'm just kind of asking for is like an amendment to instead of the lights here, just in the center there of the court, um, and being able to not do the chain link fence there, basically. Is that, is that again? Yeah. So you mentioned a property line dispute. Yeah. So there is a property line dispute along this fence line. Um, this is the property line is exactly yeah. where that property cool. line is. Okay, where is to the give us the is it the north, south, east, or west side? It's the west property line. Okay. Right here. He's talking over here. And Kim, maybe you can verify by this as well. Basically the fence here basically sits right on the property line, correct? Yeah, I have a flat now. Okay. And then, the issue is that the poles are running straight and the property line and the properties themselves are parallelograms. They're not rectangles. So at the back corner, the fence and post is off, or I'm sorry, the netting and the pole is off the fence as proposed. But as you go straight and the property line is at an angle, once you get to that last pole by my deck, that thing is like an inch off my deck and the netting keeps going over and it, it's gonna get, you know, the strong wind, it gets hooked down there and well, it's, it's, it was my it's, understanding that the rules and the netting were all supposed to be yeah. a certain amount of the fence, so they only have three months, of four months, probably four months. months. So and everything's taken down. Mm -hmm. What she's discussing here is a property line. And you start basically in our property line here, and then basically it goes down here. And then what happens? The fence. By the time you get down to the enter, the fence actually sits like about three feet under this property line, due to telephone poles and things from Digger's hotline. The dispute is not so much the property line as the angle at which the poles are set. Like I said, the poles are going straight and the property goes like that. So as you go down, the poles get closer and closer to my fence, which then allows the netting to go all over and get all caught up. And the, 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 the thing is, Kim, is the fence is three feet under Hootie's property line. Due to Digger's hotline, I can't, but the telephone pole is where all four properties meet. Correct. So when you build the fence, you have no choice. I mean, even if I move the fence, you can't use that three feet either. It's a dead three feet, you know what I'm saying? Because it's an easement for the, for the MG&E and stuff? 
But when I when I had the property um, survey, it, it basically I think what happened was the Shelton's used to own so, all this property, and then they owned a house. I believe they owned Kim's house, and they owned the stuff. So when they did when they put this fence, they kind of I think they, they separated the property. I think they just put up a fence, but the fence actually sits like basically when you get down to I don't know why I'm at here. When you get down to here, the fence actually. Kim's property is actually back here. The fence, right? But she's talking about on the southern part. Well, this southern part, it's it's right on the property line. Yeah, but what about where the volleyball court is? Excuse me, where the volleyball court is now? Is that on the property? No, line? no, that's what, this is all on Moody's property. Right, right. No, but the, the fence is the fence on the property line where the edge of the volleyball yes, court. Yes, you can see it on the flat map because it, if, it's if you them. if you run down the fence, the fence starts on the property line and then the fence runs down and it actually. It just kind of goes, migrates onto Kim's property. Her, her, Kim's property ends like somewhere back here. So this, it, it, her, her, it kind of runs like this and down here. Right. So yeah. it starts on it starts on the property line, and then it just goes. This is all on the this is like things on Moody's property. Right. I, I think that if I'm hearing correct, it's your corner post to the south that's right on the property line. So then when the wind blows, the netting goes on to her property. That's what I'm hearing. What I'm, I'm, yeah, what I'm like saying is they should be running Because there's not the three the feet that you have on the northern side. The northern side, you got plenty of room. Okay. So it doesn't. So which my understanding, what I'm hearing from Kim, is that at the southern end, because of the angling of the fence and squaring up of your, is that post gets right onto the fence. And the fence, as it is, is running right on the property, property line, line, what I'm saying is you should be maintaining the distance should be maintained all the way down to the front of the yard because you'd be running parallel to the property line. You know, if it, it's... I, I don't know what you're saying. Well, I, I know what you're saying, but I don't, I don't know if you can force someone to square up something on their property. What she's saying is she, she, she wants three like feet that. all the way down the property line. Zero lot line. Which is what was originally proposed. No, I hear you. I'm just trying to help Tom right. understand where right. you're coming from. What so it, it's a, you're making a pie, a very thin pie. And what she's saying is she'd like it squared up so it's, it's always three feet from the fence, all the way. Which is what you said in your list on the agenda. Are you talking about well. three feet from the fence? Yes. I'm, yes. yes, I'm saying you ran the, the thing straight when the lot isn't straight. It's, and you should run it parallel to the fence, keeping that distance that was originally proposed. I don't, I don't, that, it wouldn't make any sense to be able to fit the volleyball courts in there. Well, I understand your problem where you couldn't fit it in, but she's claiming, that's what she's asking. She's asking that the poles are three feet away well, I mean, from the fence, or the, three if feet from the property. If you the fence onto your property, then it wouldn't be. It is on my property. Right here, it shows on the back. We need to call some order. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, I also think what we need to look at is what did we approve, what did you build, and what problem do we have with that? Versus, sure. you know, let's. I, I feel like we should be looking at those six or seven conditional items oh, that we approved and saying you met this one, you didn't meet this one, you met that one. The lights are supposed to be facing it, and whatever they. I, I think Bill's this, done that. I think well, he's laid out the ones that are not being followed. But that rolls in, this discussion yep. rolls into that netting. Yep. So if, if we could, we, we could go down those items and have a discussion. And we do have Mike Slavin that was here, that, that is with us. Um, and I believe he was present at, at last year's meetings. Um, so let me know when you want him to, to speak. Well, yeah. I'm looking at everybody here. I think we were all here. Yeah, and I was not on the board, but I was sitting in the meetings when this came up to the board. So this is again, I don't. I'm just going to do an edit a little editorial. This is where things were rushed very quickly to get things through because of the timeline that you right. wanted and stuff. And sometimes that ends up uh, nipping you because you can't do what you want to do because other problems come in. So. We, we'll, we got to keep that in mind that, you know. I understand that. I, I feel like we, there was some pretty, not necessarily made by me, but I thought some good suggestions that would help the neighborhood and everything. Yeah. And then, I mean, you kind of just went and did what you had to do to make it work. Right. And so, 
you know, there's a reason that those recommendations were made and then, you know, we're assuming they were going to be followed. So I think what we have to do is just in the real world, did that create a problem? And it sounds like some problems were created. Let's identify those and see how we fix it. So if I but I guess, you, you know, you just can't come in and get a plan approved and then say, well, this didn't work because of that. So I just did it differently. You know, I mean, there's, unfortunately that crap takes time. So, and I want to so conclude by saying, so uh, we did receive complaints from the neighbors and we followed up uh, on those complaints, met with Tom on site and walked through these issues. And the explanation at that time was, they make physical changes to bring into compliance with the site plan and the specific implementation plan, or the option, the other option to resolve this is to bring it back to, to board and committee um, for an amendment to the plan. Now, with that being said, in the normal process of this, a specific implementation plan or development plan would have been filed with the registered OPs. Um, that has not been done at this point, and I don't know if that has any um, ruling on, on how official the approval is. And Mike, I think Mike Slavin can speak onto that. Uh, we do know that we do have an approval uh, through the minutes, and so that's been brought up for reference at this point. Well, let's hear what Mike has. I would, I would think that's a kind of a problem if we didn't file. Go ahead, Mike. Um, Bill, could you repeat your question? I didn't quite hear it. Sure. Uh, the question was in regards to recording a general development plan or specific implementation plan, and what what, what procedures do we need to go through here? Because uh, we're, we're kind of in between here where the village board has approved a, a plan, but that has not been, one, followed. Uh, and implemented correctly, and two, it has not been recorded. Right. Well, the the recording is a procedural requirement. Uh, not recording the implementation plan does not void it. It's still applicable. The purpose in recording it is so a, a copy can be found many years from now, you know, tied to the subject property at, at the county register of deeds. Um, when an implementation plan is not followed, a new implementation plan typically would be required that would be uh, required to be followed. And so at a meeting like this, you would typically try to reach a consensus on what the revised implementation plan needs to show. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah. So with that, and according to what, what I saw out there on the site, uh, the recommendations have been provided in both, uh, so in the memorandum, included in your, your document and I have um, pulled up on the board. It is to address and it is a compromise between all parties to try to attempt to get this resolved. Um, now it does come down to uh, the consideration of the planning commission and the final say is at the most board level. Okay, so um, I'm guessing we're not going to want to start from track. We're going to want to no. start. Well, I, I think we want to we want to address we want to address any of the issues that are lingering out there now. And you can decide to stop at that point, or you can address additional issues. Um, but I mean, the project is built. Uh, there is currently an approved development plan and an implementation plan. So no, I would not recommend starting over at this point. So just looking at the top there, you're saying that the, uh, you're okay with 
the light in the middle, what you would like the LED court lights to be put on fences, posts on the outside, like was discussed in the initial plan. Is that what the solution is there? Yeah, so currently the, the complaint in regards to the, the LED lights being in the middle of the court is that it shines out of the property. I'm not, I'm not sure if that means the lighting code uh, as it stands currently. Um, I'd like to hear more about mg e and why that was not pursued um, to be removed as a removal plan. Not only does that have impact on the lighting, it has impact on where the, the volumes are. And if it's a utility issue that we can't that can't be removed, that's gonna that's gonna uh, decide where the volume works are. Um, considering um, what are you gonna do for safety with that with that pole in the middle of course? Um, you know, is there going to be some kind of barrier between that? Some protection, or are you gonna you know provide more space? That, that's for debate. But I would like to see LEDs, LED lights on the exterior facing the interior, or no lights at all. You just go with neighbor. Uh, but it should be brought up to meet the goals of lighting more events under the ball. What's the dispute with MG and E? Why? Why wouldn't they? Well, what, 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 what happened is when we first started, when we first started this project, first of all, was there's a, I guess there were a bunch of storm issues going on, so they couldn't get anybody else to site <clears> for a, a while. <clears throat> and then they, I talked to them about it, and then they quoted me a price, and then they quoted me a different price, and then they quoted me a different price, you know, and so it was just getting to the point where I was running out of time, you know, and I didn't have time to, to kind of wait for them because I, I wanted to get the get the leaks started. That lights the lights bag has been there for probably you know, 50 years, you know, and so it's a security light for the back that lights up the back property basically. And so I said rather than wait for their because I I couldn't get them locked into a time or any of that kind of thing. I just had to just evolve, let's just take a move the courts down an extra you know 10 feet and we'll just Leave the pole there and just go, go around it, please. So, so it's not necessarily a dispute, it's a no. thing where you just got to chase it out at MGD. No, I can get them locked in. Every time the economy would be different, it'd be a different price, and the price would be going up. And were you trying to just remove the pole? Yeah, I was just going to remove the pole or remove it to a different part of the, of the, of the property, you know, but ideally it would have probably been just better to remove it. but you got wires running, you know, all that issue to deal with too. And it, it, it just it just didn't seem to work with their thinking. So I said, well, then I'll just don't worry about it, no big deal. I'll just go around it instead. Well that that was kind of my question. Are there other electrical feeds out of that pole? You know, where does MG bring your your well you have electrical that feeds the tweeties, mm -hmm. I believe uh, something feeds your property, Kim. You had me take the cable. Uh -huh. My cable line used to be on there, and now, in order to try to be reasonable about this, I had it stapled to the side of my deck now. It was great. Mm -hmm. They had to take the wire off because it did go to my house and bring my cable and internet in, and, and they felt they could bury it until we, they got there and realized I had cement sidewalk along the side of my house, so they couldn't bury it. So I ended up stapling it to my deck rail and then running it down the length of my yard along the fence or above the fence. So, but so, that pole that's in the back. Anyway, there's electrical that runs, you know, and internet and, you know, um, uh, spectrum, spectrum that run on that, but that piggy, piggyback on that stuff. And so that was going to be good. So the power is only feeding that pole, or is the power actually? Well, the power actually feeds weeks. It feeds weeks. Goes through the pole and then yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. There's a there's another telephone pole on the corner of the property that runs it just runs right up above, hits the telephone pole, runs right into the roofs. If you stop up and take a look at it, you'll we'll see that now. You'll see why they're making decisions I get. It'll make for reasons. So my second uh, recommendation here was based basing the course off of of uh, Basically, the decision on that, that pole. Um, you can choose to move the course that closer to that 
I feel like, well, I don't know how much space we can get. I think it's closer to the south port than it is to the north port currently. Um, considering the, the, you know, if you don't remove the pole, considering the physical constraints of the property, you, you almost have to leave it there and, and um, deal with the issue with the netting and the property line. Um, Number three is in regards to the, the chain link fence that runs about south in between um, the parking lot and the volleyball courts. Uh, it's my understanding that, again, as Tom has stated, that that was a safety, safety issue. Uh, I did go back and take a look at the alcohol license permit uh, to, to make sure um, that it's not a requirement to have that fence there and apply the call. Attorney about that. My understanding is that the, the chain link fence does not have to be there. Um, but I don't I didn't see any issue with, with removing or allowing a chain link fence not to be there as it ties it into um, their parking lot. Now Tom or the owner of the, of the bar uh, is responsible for making sure that drinking and eating is on the Within the spaces directed by their their own um, the privacy fence. Um, so there's a, a privacy fence that comes across the back of the property here, and kind of ends right there. Some of the complaints that we received from the, the neighbor there were in regards to walls going into the yard and lights kind of flashing into the yard when they come up to the park. It's my understanding by listening to the recording that, that the privacy fence was required to come up to the, at least the end of the parking lot. And I believe Tom is addressing that issue. Uh, but my recommendation would be to go ahead and pull it all the way up to Park Street, even if there is no parking lot there. The reason for that is when you go back and look at the license application for alcohol, this area up here is an allowed drinking space. This area here, in the parking, uh, parking area is not. And then all of this area here is allowed for drinking. Um, so why are you pulling it all the way up to uh, uh, Park Street? To, to have a, a separation between the two properties uh, and, you know, to, to if, if there ever, and I don't know if there's ever any drinking up in this area. No, there's no. It's all right. gone. There's no parking there ever either. To relieve that of any potential conflict. Sure. Yeah, that's appropriate to decide. But would it, I mean, potentially it would be adequate to have to go to the end of the parking lot, so it's got the lights out of people's. Well, the, yeah, yeah, right. the thing is, is that if this, if there's, there's never been a fence there ever, anyway, and the parking lot's always went to there, you know, and do it being, you know, it's the truth is being, you know, with being shut down for three months, and going through everything we went through, you know, it's just, it's just, oh, it's a money issue, you know, it's expensive, it was a big expense to do all this stuff, and, 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 and you know, I did the best job I could do, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just, we're just getting opened up again, and we can only open at 25 percent. And you know, who knows what's going to come down the road if it shuts down again? You know, it's just it's just kind of a money issue. You know, we never had a fence, like I said before. Um, there was talk about one if we do this, the parking lot extension, then then we'd run it right up to the highway. But you know, it's just it's just it's just a, it, it, it's an economic. You know, that's the thing as well. You know, that we're right into. You know, could you tell from that recording if the Fence along that parking lot was required. I do recall that the fence all the way up to the park was only going to be required if there was a parking lot. I knew lines though, but I don't recall if if the decision was made at that time to run the fence up to the existing parking lot. So uh, the recording was not clear. The recording is say um, to add fence along the west portion of the parking lot. Uh, and then there was some discussion about extend, extending it um, 
to the, the end of the new parking lot. I believe a trustee even has for clarification of that. I wasn't clarified about that. Um, so, as you understand it, it is challenging trying to understand some of these dialogues um, from a recording, um, especially if, if there is a clear confusion. But I do remember, I thought it was going to be the western side of whatever is the parking lot. So if that was going to be parking lot, then it would be fenced all the way up. And I remember also there was some discussion of putting a light there mm -hmm. if that parking lot went all the way up. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of talked about in two stages. Correct. But right. if yeah. something happened in this. If you, if you look at the preliminary map that I have, I don't have. It shows this stuff, but I don't have anything in there. I showed the park, but I don't have anything in there for a fence. You know, if we don't do this, you know what I mean? Yeah, that you're talking about this. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I thought that's what was added at the board level. I don't know about yeah, it was, at, it was, at, at the so, plan commission, but at the board when I sat in, that's what I. So sure. there was, yeah, so there was the original submitted site plans and, and the whole time, which, is, which are the documents that you see here. Through this process, through the process, through planning commission and, and through going forward, changes and amendments were made to this. Some of it was, was captured, had been captured in the minute. Some of it was captured in the recording. There isn't, it's not very clear. Um, Again, when the conversation jumped from current existing parking lot to new, not only are we dealing with fencing, you know, we're dealing with light and photometric plans, we're dealing with, with stormwater plans, uh, approvals both at the staff level and at the, the planning board level. Um, yeah. Is the southern fence up? For some reason, right here? yes, this is all up. Okay. Yeah. Every For some reason, I thought you could see. Like everybody's everybody's up. Up. It's very good space. Raw uh, iron fence. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Everything's uh, been done there. <clears throat> and if you scroll down a little bit, I don't know if you can do that, Bill. Um, I can't. I can't go down. Okay. Or, or, or hopping or whatever, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah, that way. Um, there's, there, you know, there's been no outdoor stage put in. Again, nothing, nothing like that. You know, I haven't done any outdoor music. Nothing like that. You know, I, you know, but so anyway, that's just yeah. This is basically what you see here. The only thing I'm asking for is an amendment, not put the children in fence up there, and then just leave the light pole basically in the middle here, um, because a lot of the kids sit in the middle where of these pools. Watching each game, they sit in the middle now. Um, where before there wasn't enough space in the world to do that. If you, if you come out and look at it, it makes perfect sense. You know, it's kind of, I hope I'm doing an okay job explaining everything. Uh, Kevin, thanks. The, um, the uh, netting on the south end, does it go far enough south? The to take into account the full length of the southern court. Are you talking about this one? Yeah. Yeah. Does that fence does the it doesn't go all the way to the end. Of the I know, but does it go past the edge of the court? No. So I, I, it, I can see it from this this picture. Yeah, we'll have to guess the answer together. Okay. Okay. So okay. Because if you build the, the netting. And then you had to move the core, and then then I could see. Well, well the netting it, it'll keep the ball from going to the kids' yard. If that's what you're asking. You know? No, the deck, the the court is at least a third or two thirds of the court is lined up with my deck, and the netting stops at the corner of my deck. That's, that's what I was saying in my comments. I I I, I, I should can't explain it adequately. So, well, that's opposite then what you just said. You said the netting went to the corner of the court. It's, it's not then, right? I oh, said it's not. I mean, you can oh, see from this picture. It's, it's not that though. currently oh, what it had on the original plan. Yes. He extended the court stone, but he didn't yeah, extend the netting. Oh, the court stone here. 
and so the netting just the, the back netting just extended too, you know. So okay, I believe the netting the netting will be the point here. There's minor setting of it and the court will just no no it, it, it don't. the court actually ends like right about here. The court because this is that tree and where did the netting end? Oh, oh right up, I think right up right in that same area. No, no right. I, I have a picture of it. You have a picture of it, Kim? The picture you're doesn't it show yeah. the same thing? Well, it does. I don't know have that picture. I'm in the middle of my dad. 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 I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, the drawings, if you look at the drawings in general, they're not proportionate. They're not right. The drawings show both those courts that way. See, right over here. Here's the back of my house. And supposedly like that, and these are supposed to be set way back, nowhere near, and and it's not accurate, it's not proportionate, it's not possible in that lot. Because he got them back to this fence, this first one, and he put the second one, you know, only a few feet away, and it's all the way up to my deck, halfway into my deck. So these drawings are inaccurate to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I remember. Correctly, and you since you listened to the recordings, Bill, there was discussion about the balls hitting the fence, so that that was supposed to be a distance away from the fence and go all the way to the ground. Yeah, so the way I understood it is that uh, I don't believe that there was a, a certain distance. That was just, at least I don't remember a certain distance. All I remember is that the fence needed to be a separate structure from. The, the netting. Um, again, you know, Kim said that there's supposed to be three feet in between. I, I did not hear that in the recording. Um, nor did it stay at the uh, There, There is, the netting is separate from this fence. I mean, occasionally if the wind blows, the netting would get hooked on the fence because it, you know, the net, but the netting is separate from the fence. Yes. It's inside the and I don't think anybody to be okay. Is there any way to tighten that fence so that it stays tight, even from the end the, the netting? Yeah. Truthfully, not really. There's there's gotta be a little bit of give there so you're not tearing tearing it up. I mean, it does okay, it does get hooked up on back, you know, it does put sort of hooked on, on the fence back there. But you just you just go take it, you know, take it down and it's just the way it is. This is how close it is at the southern end, where it is this far in the back corner. And it's not, I think it's not categorizing it correctly because they so much that the property line is deep and they just want to maintain the distance that the fence and the netting, or the netting and the poles are from the fence all the way down the length that you're running it. Is it that, or is it that the net getting caught and stuff is the annoying issue? It's they having the you know as it gets closer to the fence, it, it, it keeps getting caught. I'm just it's more of a it's not been built the way. I think to me, it's a, if I'm hearing and I can understand, I remember the discussion again is the concern is when you move the cord over, you opened up all kinds of concerns that won't be if the cord would have stayed where it was at. I mean that's. The troubling part of this is when you shifted the court down, it shifted everything. It changed everything for that side of your property. And I think what Kim is saying is if it stayed where everything was, we wouldn't be probably having much of a discussion. Right, right. Tonight. It, but it, because it shifted and added sand, that the netting not going there closer to her back. The, the, um, the thing is with, with the netting, get the thing. Um, I, I actually can, I can pull the netting down and fasten it to the bottom of those poles. So I can, I can do that. That will address that issue that we talked about maybe get out of that fence. Um, but I think if you move, and, and I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think the other thing is if you move the poles so you cover the whole court, then it would even uh, obstruct her view more if I hear it right. Correct. Yeah. But you don't you don't want another pole put up there, 
right? I don't want any polls put up. What I, I was just saying though is even where he's currently has the court where he put it, it's never been moved. It's just where it is in relationship to that poll. Even if he was able to get that poll out of there and move the court over 10 feet, it does not represent the same amount of space that's in this drawing. This drawing. Well, all courts are proportionately wider than that, is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying those two courts take up most of that lot. Yeah. Not, which is not how, what this drawing represents. So from the get go, he's not able to do what this drawing represents. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem, too. So but it's like it's been wrong course, from day one. They were built 30 by 60, you know, according to what they, they everybody else's courts are, basically. What's the language? Right, but your lot's not years. as long as it is they're representing it in a drawing. Yeah. Saying, All right. As long as not the lot line's 131 feet, so the courts are a little over half of that. Yeah. That's showing like more like a third. Yeah. See, this one's a difficult one. Yeah, I just want to know what what um what if he stays out of compliance, Bill? If he stays out of compliance, then um he's not able to operate on the right basis. So you want to get in compliance. And I I mean part of me just wants to say, you know, we made we spent a lot of time on this years ago. And we were not apprised of any changes here uh, until today or until recently um, that happened outside of the SIP and the development that we approved a year ago. So I I mean, I felt like we were pretty lenient at that time, or at least. Uh, Sorry, everyone. Uh, if you can hear me, I see that you're all still with us. We lost internet here for quite for a bit here. We did stop the conversation, um, and if everyone can hear me, we'll start that back up. Can someone uh, comment and let me know if you can hear us? A uh, bill yeah, can. Mike, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe where we had left off was just. Uh, Trustee Ducius uh, had a comment in regards to implementation of the, the current plan and uh, what would happen if it's not brought into compliance. My response to that was that uh, they would not be able to use the exterior or outdoor activities as planned. And so, Trustee Ducius, go ahead. Well, I guess the train of thought was lost a little bit there, but um, uh, I guess I'm pushing back a little bit and want to see compliance with the previous plan. Uh, we had thought about it a lot. We made a lot of concessions, or at least thought we made a lot of concessions to make it happen quickly. Uh, it did. We approved it, and then changes were made after our approval. We did not hear about those changes until now. And uh, I guess I'd like, you know, I'd, I'd maybe give them some time to get in compliance, but I'd like to see it get into compliance. And if it can't, you know, then what's the alternative? Propose something else. I, I'm not uh, ha uh, overly happy about allowing volleyball courts to move down that far um, where we didn't approve them. Uh, that sand is, is certainly an issue and was mentioned back then, and it still hasn't been completed uh, or fixed. Uh, and I'm sure it, was a, it wasn't an issue that didn't show up yesterday. It was an issue all last season. Uh, I'm sure, and that wasn't taken care of. Um, and so the way I'm feeling about it now is just push compliance into the previously approved plan. Which would mean getting the pole down, moving the court back over, putting the lights up. It'd be one exception that I would it's say the chain link fence would be one that I would, between the parking lot and the volleyball court, I don't, to me, that would be, but the other, the other ones in there, or all of them if you want, um, but that's one that did strike me. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we opted for that or pushed for that, can we say, hey, here's a time frame, you know, you're allowed to finish the season or you're allowed to go 
X amount of time. I'm not trying to make it a, a huge hardship, but I kind of agree with Kevin that, you know, we made a plan or you presented a plan, we approved the plan with modifications and then it just wasn't followed. So, and it's had consequences. You know, if it hadn't been followed and everybody was happy, it might be a little bit of a different issue, but. What, what would you think about this? Moving that light pole and dealing, are you talking about moving a light pole? Yeah. That's an undertaking. What about this? What about not running that court at all by Kim's? Not running this, this court, mm -hmm. just this court. I won't even put the net up, I won't put nothing up, we won't even use it. Just this one. That's it. I think that solves a whole lot of problems. Because there's just with the with that with that being shut down, there's just no way we can afford to, to do all this. You know, to be quite honest, well, if, if we weren't shut down, it, it, it might be in the cards. Well, if 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 that's the case, if that was the proposal. You're eliminating a lot of the problems that have been brought up. I, I'm with Kevin that the chain link fence is not a high priority. So I, I'm willing to buy that. If the pole's there and you're only using one court, you just gotta make sure that I'm not giving, I would not say go ahead automatically. It still has to be in compliance with our lighting ordinance, but I believe a pole to the side can meet that requirement. So, so what, is, what does that mean to you? Well, I, I don't know the ordinance by heart, but generally they don't allow for light to trespass on someone else's property. Not that they can't see your light, but generally you can position your lights so it's a downward motion, so it stays within your border. We can definitely do that with the existing, because like I said, all you do is turn it down. Right, so. Yeah, you know, meet the ordinance. Right, period. Period. Yeah. Yeah. I was just explaining yeah. what generally and, and who determines the staff determines if it's meeting the ordinance. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, definitely a lighting plan put in place. There's a process for that. Um, and then I guess uh, there's the fence along the uh, parking lot. And I guess, you know, to me I kind of remember that that should be done. Um, I'm I, not, I think Tom is addressing that. No, he said he didn't want to. Well, I mean, if, if the truth is, if we don't have to incur that expense because of the being shut down, it would be great if we didn't have to, because like I said, the parking lot hasn't changed at all. Nothing's changed. If I don't have to put up the fence, that would be wonderful. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Well, cars, cars, we're always parking there. Cars are still parking there the same as they were before. Yep. So, if nothing had been done, that same that issue would still be there and has been forever with the lights being there. Uh, I don't know if that makes it okay or not. Calvin, go ahead. I, I just don't think it was, if Phil looked in my recollection, was that was a question more at the time. And Phil looked for it and the answer didn't find it in the minutes. And so to me, we're, that would be adding something new unless we explicitly found it mentioned in that minutes at the time. Unless, unless Tom went ahead and put the other parking lot on that. That, that was clear. Yeah, that was clear. That was supposed to be a fence that all the way out to the park. So that's kind of saying no chain lead fence, no parking lot fence, and just potential solutions here. Don't use the one volleyball court until maybe you get in a financial situation where you could make the, could actually meet the plan, you know, and, and get rid of the post. I mean, maybe that's never, but maybe it happens sometimes. Well, it's definitely in the cards down the road, but once we gain some traction get on our feet yeah. again, um, you know, but I just, we, like I said, we just, I'll just take the net down here, and then if we can just use this, just tweak the light down. I don't even have to have the light on this one. Those can be removed. There won't even be anything over there. You just tweak the one on here, down, and that's it. I, I would think you could have that light down enough where it would stand your property from there. I mean, that's what you're gonna have to right. show that you yep. did. Yep. Yep. I'll have it down tomorrow. I guess how does how do you guys feel about that? I'm I'm actually very pleased that Kevin and everyone's on board with pushing back a little bit that he's not following what we approved. Um, we have a lot of people in this village in the past that have just done what they wanted. 
how I think on certain things. Um, no, and I like, I always want to option to see if he would be willing to get rid of one of the volleyball courts. I know it's a cost that you put it in, and obviously you're going to lose tournament players, but I think at this point, I don't know how else you can do it. I think, <clears throat> I think there should have been compliance with the original implementation plan. I'm <clears throat> particularly concerned that by not complying with the plan, there's been a real impact on a neighbor that was not anticipated. And I'm willing to be flexible in terms of installations on this kind of property, as long as it doesn't negatively affect the neighbors. But in this case, it has negatively affected the neighbors. And I'm just not. I think, uh, I think that second court shouldn't be used until the implementation plan that was approved is complied with. It's, uh, uh, I might even put a time limit on that. You know, you've got, you can't use the court this year and uh, the implementation plan implemented within a year, within a season. Uh, don't use that court. Right, that is just from my opinion. Use that court, but, you know, not indefinitely. I think, uh, I think there should be compliance with the implementation plan at some point. And Reasonable to me to do that. Um, I think we should, you know, if we think that not using that second volleyball court addresses the concerns, one concern that I would still have is Sam's going to still be there. You're going to have to do something about the runoff. Well, the sand, the sand. Um, we actually got a grass berm growing back here now in, in, on the inside of this fence that we're letting grow. So that should almost be naturally taken care of. I did go look, you know, with Bill on the other side of Kim's fence, and there, there really wasn't any sand there that I see. You know, I mean, that's. I just gave you pictures of the sand on the inside of my fence. Oh, What's that? And I said, I just gave them pictures of the sand on the inside yeah. of my fence it, it, this year. Kim, can I ask you, is the sand coming from? Uh, the northern court or the southern court or both? It's right in the middle, so I'm not sure. The sand, he used to have a grass strip there, and then when I approached him about the fact that Nate was mowing his lawn and running a weed whacker along the bottom of my fence like a buzz saw, could we please resolve that? His way of resolving it was to fill the whole thing with sand. So then when it rained, both of our lots are like a cereal bowl that fill up with water when it rains really hard, and the water flows between the two you know, just because the ground's so saturated. So then the, the sand started pouring in in a particular section of my flower beds on the other side of the fence, which is about in the middle of the two, you know, in the middle two poles is right about where that is. And you can't get that out of there. It's still there this year. Despite, uh, despite the, uh, the wee whacking issue with the grass. Did the grass retain the sand while it was when it was there? The grass. Grew? I did not have that issue because the sand wasn't right up against the fence. So the, the answer is yes. Tim? Is that like the sand was not coming in when the grass was there? Not that I was aware of. Okay. And the and the bottom of my fence was allowed to dry out when it rained. Now that there's sand there, it continues to stay wet and will probably eventually rot faster than normal. Is a concern. Well. It seems like a fixable problem with um, some kind of planting, something, some dirt there. Uh, you know, instruct your lawn care guy not to there, go so close. There, to there is a natural grass berm. I believe you'll see it when you were out there. There's a natural grass berm that is literally growing up like the lawn. But, but did you put sand along the fence so the weeds went when, when, when Kim brought to my attention that, you know, uh, they, Right. Yeah, I understand the issue of the tall grass. You do the weed so, so whacking. So I weed whacking it. So what I did is I actually I did. I thought to curb that problem to fix it. Yeah. I just covered up with sand, sand. and they wouldn't have to weed it anymore. Well, then the sand issue came up. So well, let's just let this burn grow. Yeah, I, I think that's what needs to happen. Just leave it. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening right now. Oh, I just want to make. I just want to make a comment that it's growing in. It hasn't been landscaped or anything to the, the vegetation is still growing. There's still, there's still remnant sand in that area. Well, and again, it doesn't follow the drawing where the sand is contained in quartz. It seems to me that the sand needs to be contained. Right, right now, but, it's just a big sand pit. But until the, until the 
sand was intentionally placed there to eliminate the damage to the fence, it wasn't an issue. So that the grass that was there before you put the sand there, it sounds like, was containing the sand adequately. Right. The so I don't think it's too there. hard to go back to that. Um, With all the sand that's still like sediment sitting right there, I think it is. Well, you got you got to have to remove that. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me like a few wheelbarrows full of dirt and you should some come out flowers. <laughs> you should you should come out and look at it because it's it's the whole length of the fence and it's more than just you know it's been there for a year. Right, right. <laughs> Rain and wet it's and dry, you know, it's a mess. It made it's made a nuisance on her property. That's mm -hmm. what it's done. I mean, it's she's been damaged. Right, and but there, it's a fixable thing. I, I, I don't know if that was a good landscape move, but well, yeah, I, I guess that's all I'm saying. I'm not I'm not uh, arguing that it didn't make a damage on her land, but on his side of the fence, something can be done to yeah. solve that problem. Yeah, it should be done. Which wasn't really a problem until the sand actually got moved there. So the original plan was kind of good, but then we just had a crazy weed whacker guy that was causing some issues on the fence. And so, I, I mean, I think we would certainly request that you build something up there that's not going to go through the fence anymore. I don't, you know, I don't know what you do about the existing sand that's there. Uh, if, you know, yeah, well, on my side of the fence, it is what it is. I have to wait for time to do whatever. To, to but at least we can stop from happening anymore. Judy? I wasn't here for the first well, so I wasn't sure what all had happened, so really I don't. I mean, I would like it to be fixed. I'm good with only using one court for now. All right, so I'm just want to get a feel for the group. So people are comfortable with just using, restricting it just to the northern court. Uh, we'll waive the six foot chain link fence to the east of the property. We better put in there that we're not going to require um, the fence to the west side of the parking lot. Unless it's extended. Unless the parking lot is extended, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll make sure the lighting for the northern court meets ordinance. And the sand issue is and the sand issues taken care of. Yeah. From water management on the west side of the property also. Yeah. All right, is people is that did I kind of sum it up? That's what I've been kind of and hearing. Can I, I just, the poles down where they're can not? I just add one? One more thing on that is if you, you mentioned that there was a way to hopefully tighten up the fence. Yeah, what or, I can do is I can actually, I didn't think about this before, but I can actually bungee cord it down. I didn't think about that before. Yeah. Usually I just bungee cord it, but I can actually close it. If you need the anchor. Yes. If you, do that, if you, if you bungee cord them to the pole, they're going to slide up. They're, they're going to they're gonna slide up. So, you're right. So, I mean, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's foolproof, but I can definitely get it better than what it is. You put just a bracket at the bottom and then hook it to that bracket. Correct. That, correct. Hook it. And are, are those poles cemented in? Yes. What what they are is what I did is I put, got a concrete, I used to be a general contractor, so I got a concrete chute, poured the concrete in, put a tube inside there, um, let that set, then I put the poles inside there. So it's a slip fit. It's slip fit. So it would be possible to remove a couple of the poles on the court that's not being used. So there would be no net. I, 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 I think so. If, if they somehow this concrete did seep in there and pull them in there, I think so. I don't know. I've never tried. You know, I don't know. Because that would definitely discourage a lot more people trying to play even without a net. Well, yeah. If, if I take this all down, I mean, it's, it's not a volleyball. It's all can I, just, can I just clarify one thing? Is that the, the removal of the cellar court, is that a permanent removal, or is that just until it, the, the rest of the plan can be brought into compliance? My thing is the court can stay there, uh, they just can't use it. 
you know, if, if they choose to turn it back into lawn, that's fine. But um, yeah, I thought we, I, I thought we, um, my thought was that he, he could use it if he came into compliance, right? Three feet, right. which is moving it north 15 feet or whatever the number and get rid of and get rid of the center post. Right? Well, I just want, I just want to clarify that and then if, if, if it's not. An active volleyball court, why would you be used? I don't know how people would tell the difference. And no, net, we would. no, 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 that's a big difference. If the net's gone, I don't see how it can be used as volleyball. People will still play there. Really? I think yeah. those two people still don't <laughs> just practice. People will still play there. But they can do that in the grass. The yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I just, I just want to be. No, I, I, my whole thing is it just can't be used. For games, for any for practice. practice. I mean, again, if it, you know, it'd be like no different if they went into the, the, the grass and started to bump. I don't know if we can control all that. I, 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 I mean, I don't think these are professionals that do a whole lot of warming up. But at least but, when I was yeah. in the volleyball league and we had fishes, it, fish lips, we didn't uh, do a lot of warming up. And shouldn't the poles come down on that? Or if it's not being used, right. it, if they took a the, slide the, out. The poles, the, the, the poles I was talking about with the, are, are the, these big ones. Right. Right. These poles are concrete right into the ground. No, no, we're, I think they're talking the, about the ones the one. with the net. I'm talking yeah. about the one on the property line. The, the barn side toward the human's property, yeah. yeah. I, if those were slip fits and if they could slide out to temporarily move them until you can come back in compliance. I, I, I would have to say, I would have to say, I think I can. I, I don't know to be honest with you. But I, I just don't want to, I mean, I don't want to create a worse situation where now balls are coming over the line because the fence is gone, you know, versus the, if the aesthetic aesthetic issue of the fence can be somewhat, you know, I mean, we've already made decisions here that have came back to haunt us or, you know, you by putting say in there created another problem by trying to eliminate one problem. So. Taking the post down, if somebody does go over to the other court and gets volleyball over, that's going to be a frustrating situation for you. I guess, I guess, yeah. So I, I'm just asking you, what, which one is better from your perspective? Well, can I just say something? I, I guess I'm not clear. I, 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 it's my understanding that the poles are okay with the plant. It's the court that moved, not the poles. So I think the poles are within the site plan. So I don't know if I want to jockey with that. I would think it would be nice to take that down since your neighbor really would like it down. It's not, it's not a useful thing for it anymore, but to require it, then I'm worried if you can't get them out and we're cutting it. And I don't think that's requiring. I've seen how they're putting it to you kind of right. to take them down. Right. I don't want to make it part of the special implementation plan because they got to be able to go back up if he comes into compliance. That's what I Right. Mean. So they can go back up, but if he's kind enough and he can remove them, I, I just think it would be a very nice gesture. And I think that's something you two should discuss and decide yeah. if, you know, if it's better for you to have them down or up. And then, you know, another thing I could do, Kim, is I, I could, you know, you got that netting that goes across there. I can just take the netting section down, you know, and then that's it. I can just leave the pole there because honestly, putting those poles in was a monster because they're heavy, you know, and they're set. They're set to stay, um, you know. But I, ultimately, the ultimate nice thing we do, I guess, it, it's just we can just get the net down. That's done. Tweak the light down, that's done, and we're done, basically. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Just gotta get that sand out so it doesn't go a little bit more. Well, I mean, like I said, I looked over at the fence and I didn't see any sand. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, I think Bill's out there with the day too. Did you see any sand? I did. I mean, I didn't look at the Well, anyways, let's just, I mean, that's a concern that's out there. So let's make sure it's addressed. We need the grass berm back. Yep, and it's coming back. The grass berm is coming back. So, <clears throat> all right. Does someone have? Uh, would like to try to throw this into a motion? <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> um, I'll do my best. Uh, I'll make a motion 
that I started to get all the terms in there. I'll make a motion that uh, that Hooties, the owners of Hooties, comply with the previously approved uh, specific implementation, implementation plan with the following changes or reiteration. Uh, that any lighting comply with the village ordinance. That there is no chain link fence required between the court and the parking lot. That there is no need for a privacy fence to the northwest lot line unless a future parking lot is developed. That all or that stand, I'm sorry, that and that's all sand must uh, be prevented from going underneath the fences. And that the southern court be shut down until all points of the previously approved, uh, approved SIP and the changes made today are approved by the board. I think that's. If that's well, let's, let's get a second, sir. Anybody I'll second? It. All right, now we have discussion. Go ahead, Eric. I think that addresses all the issues. Um, you mentioned about putting a timeline on trying to get it in compliance, but I think we're all kind of agreeing that if he wants to stick with one court, we can live with that as long as all these other issues are addressed. I, I think it's a reasonable. Do we want it approved by the board or do we want it approved by staff, the staff control zoning? I'm, I'm just asking. Because then you would have to come back to the board to prove that he did it. Staff would know that. So the, the, you're talking about the bringing it up to. Well, his motion says that the board would have to approve that they changed it. We can make the board do it. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just thinking if staff did it, it would be easier for him in keeping things off of your guys' agenda. I don't, it's up to you, Kevin. It'd be a friendly amendment if you choose to do it. We don't do friendly amendments anymore. <laughs> no? Okay, we're done with those? Yeah. It'd be just a motion to change the language. Um, I guess what I would do. I guess I would leave it this way and let the board decide. That's fine. Because they can do a motion. And that way we can move it to, if they want to move it to staff or keep, you know, a handle, a hand on it. I think we're okay with that. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I said I was just asking. No, no, that, I, it's a valid point. It's a good point. I'm just thinking the board has an opportunity to change it. And I'd hate we do staff and then they go back to board. Let's just let the board decide how they want to handle it. Okay, just a quick question. Yes. How does he proceed tomorrow? If we well, tomorrow that? I would take down the, uh, the volleyball net. I would look at taking the net down if that's it. I would do a survey along the fence to see where the sand is getting through and do some modifications, either put a blocker in that or dig some of that sand out and replace it with dirt. Um, I, that's about all I would think would need and to, to oh, and then check, check the light. lights. Yeah, the light adjusts the right Yeah, yeah if yeah, if necessary. That to me is pretty much yeah. So I, I think it's very little cost to you of spending on that. I don't know how much it'll cost you removing that the play from that court, but um, I don't see you having to spend a whole lot except for maybe on lighting in the right light. Lamp. Well, I mean, Bill, is it is it is it okay? Are you guys okay with the, the light I have in there? I just turn it down, and, and just take you just basically take the one off court too, or just you know. Well, okay. according to what has been motion this evening, that my understanding is that light that currently is there now is okay. Okay. As long as it meets the lighting ordinance, and so okay. I'll have to review the lighting ordinance okay. to make sure that that structure meets. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm gonna, if, if we're gonna be voting on this, I'm gonna be voting yes, but I, I just am uncomfortable with 
specific implementation plans that aren't in fact implemented. And, um, you know, if the owner doesn't want to implement that plan, they can come back with another plan. There should be some way to revisit it. I'd like, I'd like to know that this isn't still a problem, you know, in a year or two. I'd like to hear from you in a year or two whether the issues, which I think are real impacts, in fact got solved. Uh, and if they didn't, then there should be a new implementation plan. Um, well, I think everybody in the group agrees with you that when we pass these SIPs, they should be followed. There's yeah. no doubt. And I think what we've done tonight is that we've made that point. And now what we're doing is making basically adjustment by making him, we're, hold, we're holding him accountable. I think we have. I don't think I. I don't see us giving up on anything that was in the original site plan, because once the southern court was removed, that's where most of the violations were tied to that. So that has been removed. Uh, so I, I believe, you know, we've got pretty good. You know, there's a couple of questionable things on what was required and not, but what we can prove, I think we've met those requirements now, or at least set it up so they could be met. Ma'am? Yeah. I, I agree with you, and I know last year when we talked about the position of that second court, you said, well, it was no big deal anyhow, because the only time you're ever gonna use it is for that fundraiser in August. Well, we do a spike rest thing every year. Right. And so that's something I was gonna bring if up If I may finish. Um, so to me, to not use that when he already said he's only going to use it for that one thing is not really that much of a sacrifice. And I think, as you had said earlier today, too, and you even just said yourself, you know, you brought a plan and you said you were going to do this and you didn't. And now it's like, huh, well, you know. Well, no, I, I'm going to disagree. And I feel like it is because, it, you know, then when does rules count? When does, when does bringing a plan count? But, but Kim, I, 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 and I understand your frustration, but I think we are. I think we're holding them accountable. We're not saying we're changing the plan to meet what you did. We're saying, no, we're holding true to the original plan. Now, if he eliminates one of the court and he comes into compliance with one of those, we have held them accountable. That's not really, I mean, the thing that I guess that kills me is the fact that we're even here and that he's in dire straits come into compliance because of this current situation over the last six months has nothing to do with the fact that he didn't do it right to begin with. You know what I mean? This, we're not, I feel like you're, you're, you're cutting them some slack because it's tough times, but these are all decisions you made last year to not do what you were supposed to do. And right. that's what, what is just uh, so hard to swallow. I would agree. We should have followed up and made sure that SIP was followed last year. That is absolutely correct. And that that's on the village. We should have done it, absolutely. But we're here now, and what we need to do is address where the problems were in the SIP, and I think we have accomplished that, that now this property is in compliance with the SIP with what we have done today. And just so you know, the penalty would have been fines if he hadn't been, if, if we would have done the checking. We would have made him comply or shut it down or receive fine zoning violation. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you were looking to say we were going to collect. Shut no. down the whole business. No, just, what the I expectation was? Do what they say they're going to do, and then on top of it, the place is for sale. So it's like, why are we doing this? We're in the middle of a pandemic. Like, I don't even think you can play volleyball right now. And it's like the whole situation is just so crazy. It is. I will agree with that. But I think we have gone as far as we can with this. So, um, is there any other discussion from uh, the commission? I just want to know when was this picture taken? There's the grass um, and sand coming underneath the fence. That was last year's sand picture. Now it's melted into the dirt a little bit, but it's still all there. Thank you. All right. Let's take a roll call vote, please. 
Uh, trustee Fusios. Yes. Commissioner Pedro? Yes. Commissioner Case? Yes. Commissioner Jaquet? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Kellogg? I'm going to abstain. And uh, President Langfellow? Yes. All right, Tom, you understand the rules of engagement and what needs to happen? Can you please just reiterate them for me <laughs> if you don't mind? All right, Kevin, would they made the motion or would you like me to do it? I think put them in maybe not the language of the motion, just. Yeah. Uh, lighting got to meet ordinance. You don't need a chain link fence anymore between the parking lot and the sand courts. The privacy fence to the northwest, we clarified what we could improve, which was no need for that fence to the northwest. The sand has got to stop. That's obvious one. Can't go underneath. Um, only the north court. Uh, until you come into compliance with this and the previous SIP last year. Okay. All right. Procedurally, uh, what we'll do is we'll draft up the uh, specific prison location plan, uh, which becomes an agreement between Air South and the village. And once that's done, that will be recorded. And so that it, it warns uh, anyone uh, who get the property. Um, and then give me a call once you have that set up. I'll come out for an inspection. Um, and we'll make sure that we can see the floor, uh, whether it might be, be my letter um, or some other things uh, that you do. Okay. Um, would I, and, and if we do decide to sell the place, I just want to bring this up. If we do decide to do something like that, would um, the new owner just be under the, the same? Yeah, they basically the current, court. yeah, the current general development plan calls for uh, this plan to be specific to the current board. Um, and so, yes, so if there is a new owner, that person would have to come before the plan commission and the village board. And so he, but he would basically be underneath basically the same rules I'm under. It would be under the same assumptions unless okay. there are okay. changes that, okay. that that person is requesting. Okay. Um, understand that the plan that is approved, recommended, and then finally approved by the village board is the zoning specific to this site. So any changes that needs to be made or wants to be made needs to be approved. Prior so, to making that so in order to come into compliance, that basically I'm going to have to do so, we have to get that call up on the board, correct? To bring that back. You know, to bring the second court in. Okay, to so get that telephone pole out of there. And then just to slide that second court basically five feet apart from this one, basically. And I'd be in compliance, right? Telephone, court, move, done. Okay. And make sure your lights are in compliance. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to, I would want to, I would want the courts to look more like that map than what has apparently been built, which has that, that southernmost court, you know, all the way down to the neighboring deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, yeah, I'd love to hear. Yeah. Um, I thought we were approving this when we approved it, not. Oh, you were. You were. <laughs> he, he shifted it down. Yeah, yeah. But, but then there's also there's also an issue of the courts not being there. If you look at them, they're a lot longer. They're a lot more than twice as long as they are wide. And they drawing, right? space. They're supposed to be thirty by sixty. That's not an accurate representation right. of what he built. We're good with that. Can be we'll that can be built. That can be built. All right. Yeah, you're done. We're on to the next. Okay. Thanks. Um, I do. Yeah. I do have a question that came up though during this. Um, can we put it on? Can I? It, it's related to this topic. Uh, it was about the liquor license. Did you hear that? That you can the liquor license can't is it? They can drink up in that grassy area. Yeah, well, that, that's part of the premise, yeah. So, can we, can we make a note about that when we approve the license? Yeah, the yeah. license will be on the right. board agenda. Like for June, yeah. So, can we make a note about that, please? Yeah, we'll make sure we're specific about where. Yeah, or that we don't allow it up there. Because if we, if we don't, if we are going to allow it up there, then, you know, then I think we have to rehab that. So, well, wouldn't it have to be tested by ordinance? Apparently not. No. 
Yeah, because we do open patios and and stuff like that that people can. We can have that discussion. Yeah, that's a whole. The premise of what a liquor license from is a, a separate issue when we talk about liquor licenses. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, number three, initial review, comment on Scenic Valley Lot 45, Lot Division request. Okay, so um, I am not looking for an action on this item. We received it um, no, last week, and staff has not had an adequate time to fully vet this request at this time. I saw it as an opportunity to discuss the comment from the Planning Commission. Essentially, uh, this issue is in regards to uh, securing an easement from Wingra, and this is on the uh, Scenic Valley subdivision. Um, I'm just going to bring up the map here. So if you can imagine uh, this up here, oops, sorry. this up here is County KP and this is in the southwest section of the village. Rocky Bluff Court is proposed to the town southerly into what used to be the old Wingra Quarry Pit. It was proposed that a portion of Rocky Bluff Court was it would be a public road, and this section that comes uh, connecting to that public road into the quarry would be a private road. Now that private road had a number of variances attached to it. They also had a number of easements going that way. My understanding that Winger wants to control uh, this section or the private road leading to their active quarry south of this lot, and therefore um, has requested that arise a petition to the village to subdivide the lot, which is currently zoned as light industrial, so that they may obtain uh, metal. Um, so there's a couple of procedural things that need to happen here before the plan commission should consider the uh, certified survey map first. There's additional information that we will need uh, in order to have a full application uh, for uh, a variance, uh, which is the memo suggests a number of zoning variances uh, in order to make the certified survey map work. Just a reminder that zoning variances go to uh, zoning board of appeals, which is a separate body. Uh, any variances for the subdivision map itself would come to the commission. Uh, eventually, the certified survey map will have to be approved by the post board. And so, there are two proposals um, provided. One is simply creating an outlaw. And then creating two separate light industrial lots, lots 45B and 45A. And then the second proposal would break that, that access up into three separate um, sections to give technically access to those lots off of a public street, but there's other concerns that, that we have here. Um, yeah, Mike slightly on the phone. Uh, Mike, I'll unmute you. Do you have anything to add? I, I do. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. All righty. Um, well, I'm opposed to granting variances for lots that were just created. I, I understand the, the, the rationale and in my mind, there's a better solution than a bunch of variances. Um, before I get into that, I want to point out that approval of either of these CSMs would void the conditional use permit uh, for lot 45, which has been granted to a lot 45 that's all in one piece. Um, so what, what, I would suggest is instead uh, doing lot 45 as a planned development, which would eliminate the need for any variances and 
ultimately could approve uh, alternate A um, more or less is drawn. We'd, we would definitely want the input of the village engineer and the public works director. Um, I'm not even sure that that bulb is necessarily needed anymore. What, what I'm afraid is, uh, I'm afraid of variances because they're forever. Um, I believe that uh, the plan development would uh, allow us to reapprove the proposed storage uses from Horizon. Um, we could account for the fact that now two lots are needed. Um, we can grant any flexibilities that are needed, um, which are a way to get variances through the plan development process without going to the Board of Appeals and without the Plan Commission having to grant any variances. I just, I just feel that um, the approach that's being proposed will undo a conditional use permit that was to everybody's satisfaction and um, will make it difficult to reapprove a conditional use permit um, for this property without going to a plan development anyway. And I, I just think that a sledgehammer is being used here uh, with all the variances that are being requested when a plan development uh, could do a trick with, with, without creating any need for variances. So just so I understand, you would still have outlot 10 and 45 would still be developed under your proposal? What, yeah, what, what I would say then is uh, lot 45A and lot 45B could still be approved as a, a storage facility, but it's gonna to need to be reconfigured a little bit because now lot 10 is in there. Um, and then to the extent that we need any flexibility and under a plan development, uh, we can grant those, we, we would eliminate the need for zoning variances and potentially um, uh, get this all done in the same amount of time, including the reapproval that's needed for the storage facilities. Um, granting, granting variances that are um, self-created um, when, when a plat is done with all, without all of the initial um, details being satisfied before the plat was approved, um, does not, in my mind, meet the legal requirements for a variance, which should be, it's not a self-created hardship. So just to get around all of the complications that, that uh, zoning variances create, um, I think a plan development approval is, is a much cleaner way to go. Then we have an exact plan of what's been approved. The use is negotiated as part of that. And I think it would be a simple thing to reapprove the storage uses. And uh, we, aren't, we aren't left with a bunch of variances that have been granted, but over time they tend to get forgotten and sooner or later they cause problems. I just want to clarify, this is Bill, that a plan development does not necessarily subdivide a lot like it's presented now. The whole lot 45 as originally proposed would be rezoned to plan development. The details within the plan development would be by separate plan, general development, specific implementation as just. Bill, right. We would still need a certified survey map in the end, and, and I think it would look generally like alternative A looks, but um, at the end of the process, then Horizon would still have the ability to use this property for indoor storage. So an example of the way that we're doing that is on the creek crossing, the condominium side, we're doing that by a plan development. And with all the specifics within that plan development, we'll still need to be approved by the, the 
final condition for both four, it's a five steps for variance as opposed to just require on the current zoning, which is my adjustment. Right, but now I'm hearing a little thing different because you're saying the whole lot would be part of that. But it's my understanding this whole reason this came up is Wingrove wants control of that drive. So are we with the proposal? Are we still doing that, or that just becomes part of a plan? Because I'm not sure Wingrove wants that. Wingrove wants that out lot 10, so they control it, so they know they can always use it. So it, that's a question that we need to. So the, the plan, the, the, the plan involvement route has not been proposed here. My, my, my response would be the plan development would be a way to make Outlaw 10 completely legal and conforming without having to grant any variances. Uh, so Wingra would get what they want. Oh, okay. and, and it would allow for Horizon to get the indoor storage facility reapproved. Can you, Mike, this is Bill, can you own portions of a plan development? Yeah. Separate lots? Yep. Okay. Well, I guess in the condominium, you could argue. Right. right. So often in a, in a condominium project, the, um, Common drives are owned by the homeowners association, whereas the condominium units are individually owned. And the last question I had on that is, um, if we do it that way, does the village have some type of way of enforcing that that road stays in good condition? Because I can see with all the trucks it being destroyed and when we're saying we don't care our trucks can do it but everybody who has a storage shed up there if they can't get to their storage unit because the road's so bad what's the recourse the village has? right well i think that would be built into the plan development the way that i see it a plan development allows all three parties to be satisfied that their immediate interest and their long-term interest are protected. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a surgical level of precision, whereas granting variances and throwing out an already approved conditional use permit, you know, in, in my mind, would tend to cause more problems in the long run than it would solve. So what I'm, what I'm recommending is not a way to prohibit everybody's objectives. It's, it's a way to do it in a much more uh, calm manner where everybody's interests are, are thoroughly addressed. Mike, this is Kevin. Sorry, Jay. No, go ahead. Uh, this, this seems to uh, simple. <laughs> Um, do you see a counter argument yet from Horizon or Lingra? Well, it, you know, if the, the, uh, the counter argument would be that if parties don't get along, a, a plan development could take longer. But, you know, I, because these, the need for these variances are kind of self created. I don't see them getting approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals. It'll put the Board of Zoning Appeals in a very awkward situation where um, if they say yes, they don't make people happy. And if they say no, they, they, they don't make people happy. Um, and, and legally, um, you know, because there is a zoning alternative that could do the trick, I just think it's a much cleaner approach. And I'm sure that zoning uh, board of appeal will take additional time. Is that correct? Right. Well, you know, the, the problem with the variance is you need zoning variances from the zoning board of appeals. If there are any subdivision variances needed, and there may be, um, those will go to the plan commission. Um, and, and then the, the village board, um, 
really won't have a have much of a role except to approve the certified survey map. So the board's um, objectives are are hard to represent in a variance process. Judy, go ahead. Um, so let's say on Outlaw Lot 10 and Wingrove's trucks did beat it up and it's in a pub, do who polices it and who goes back to Wingrove and says you have to fix that road? Right. Well, typically, I mean, I mean that would be negotiated in the, in the plan development, but typically there would be a level of maintenance that would relate to the same level rating system that the village uses for its road. And when it, say, reached a level C, um, the village would provide notice that it needed to be repaired uh, before it reached level D. And the responsibility for repair, um, we don't know yet if it's all Wingra or it could be a combination of the two because we don't know where lots 45A and 45B will take access. Will they be only to the part of Outlaw 10 that's north of the bulb or will they also take access to the area south of the bulb? So again, you know, under the variant CSM approach, we don't know. Um, under a plan development, everything is known about that. I just, I just, I, something you said, Mike, um, Judy's question was <clears throat> about the, the road maintenance, which is a good question. And, I'm, and, I, and I think they can work that out in agreement. But what you just said is that the, it, was, it would be similar to what the village does, but this is on a private road. So the village has nothing to do with this road and not saying that it has to be up yet. Except for if it's part of the like a planned development. Okay. That puts us at, well, let's try to avoid that. So, but then Wingra has to pay for the repairs. So no, it's, it's maybe they'll pay 75% Horizon, the riser, whoever owns uh, storage right. will pay 25. Because their people are using it too. But from an enforcement standpoint, if, if we in the planned development say, whenever it reaches the state's fee, you need a trigger. If they don't, they would be in, in well, they should be able to develop that. Seems reasonable. They both yeah. have ongoing business operations there that are generating revenue. And there's going to be some costs associated with that. A parking lot or road is one of those. Hmm. Anybody else? All right, so this was just an information. This right? information will continue to pursue. So, um, Bill, one thing that I, I should have mentioned, if you could go to the list of requirements that precede these. Which one you want, the first one? Or the yeah, they're both, they're both really long. And so, um, under a plan development, we would work our way through this so that everybody was happy under a variant CSM approach, it's like it's either on or off. And it's hard to make anybody happy when it's either a yes or a no. Um, so I, I just think the plan development approach has a much better chance of creating a win-win-win situation um, and leaving the village with a less messy um, arrangement to deal with later potentially and give the village more enforceability on issues later. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, you have the information. You have some time to think about it. Motion to adjourn. I have second. a second. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you.
Thanks for a good rest of the week. Yeah, you too, Eric. Yeah. 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 Said it was extremely exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on vacation, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs>